All right. Uh, so what's going on with day 18? Um, so basically we have this weird number system, sort of. It's not really a number system. We just have this like data structure that we have to operate on, uh, which are these like nested pairs. Right? So another way to think of it is like a binary tree, where either you have just a number at a leaf, uh, or you have a pair with a left and a right half. Right, so you know this guy is a pair whose left half is nine and whose right half is another pair whose left half is eight and whose right half is seven, and so on. This is a more complicated thing, but like this is the left half and this is the right half or something like that. Um, and so basically, they've defined some functions uh, on this data structure, and we need to implement them. Uh, this was the hardest day so far, by the way, because one of the functions is hard to implement. Uh, but anyway, we'll get to that. Okay, so the main function is add. Uh, and so basically, add is just form a new pair. That's very simple, right? Add A and B, you form the pair AB. But then you need to reduce, and reduce is complicated. Uh, so reduce is first you explode any deeply nested pairs recursively, uh, right? You keep doing that until there's no deeply nested pairs. And then you split any large numbers repeatedly until there's no more large numbers. Uh, and then you're done. OK, so so far we defined two functions, add and reduce. And now we need to define two more functions, explode and split. Uh, so explode is, is the hard one. Uh, so you take your pair that you want to explode. And uh, if there's anything, if there's a number to the left of it, well, I guess we can just read what it says, right? The left value of the pair is added to the first number to the left, physically to the left in the string of that pair. And the right number is added to the first number to the right. Uh, and then instead of a pair, you get zero. Uh, you know, so this guy, the nine doesn't do anything because there's no number to add it to. The eight gets added to the one and the pair gets replaced one making nine, and the pair goes replaced with zero. So now we have zero, nine, two, three, four. Uh, okay, so that's the hard one, because figuring out which number is to the left and which number is to the right is hard, in my, in my opinion. Um, I'll talk to you how I solved that. It's very ugly. Uh, split, much simpler. Um, it just takes a number and makes it a pair. Uh, and the pair is the... Uh, the number divided by two on the left half and the number divided by two rounded up on the right half. Um, okay, so those are the four functions that we're interested in. Add, reduce, explode, and split. Uh, and in part one, we have this big list of numbers and we're supposed to add them all up. Uh, a bunch of examples. And then we were supposed to report the magnitude of the final sum, so I guess that's a fifth function. Uh, so that has some definition for pair, and you know, for a pair, it's three times left plus two times magnitude right. For a leaf, it's just a number. Uh, so the question, first question is, what is the sum of all the numbers in the list? What is the magnitude of that sum? Uh, okay, so let's look at my Python solution. Um, I see, this is just for part two. Uh, so let me quickly implement part one. Right, so we start out, um, I guess one thing here is we don't necessarily, like normally the way I would sum a list is I would say P1 equals zero and then iterate through the entire list. But in this case, we don't really know what the identity for add is, right? It's not clear that we could add something and leave the number the same. So it's safer to start out with like X0 plus X1, right? It's, it's start out with the answer being the element of the list and then add all the other elements of the list to that. Because uh, we don't have an identity for add. Okay, so this is for part one. Um, just add up all the numbers and see what we get. And I think this one's somewhat fast. So this says 4017, which was the right answer. That's good. Uh, okay. So um, I'm using the fact that these look like Python lists. They they like use the square brackets and commas, and so. Uh, 
this I know this AST little eval, eval thing is a built-in function uh, that takes a string and sort of converts it to a Python object. So this will give me the Python list. Um, and so X is just going to be, right, so I'm just going to sort of handle these numbers as Python lists. Uh, and so X is going to be the list of, you know, starting numbers. So for part one, we want to add them up. Okay, so how does add work? Uh, so, I mean, this is mostly just uh, following the instructions, right? Just do what they said. Okay, well, so to add two numbers, you form the pair of them, and then you reduce that pair. Very simple. How do you reduce? Uh, so this is slightly more complicated. Um, and this may or may not be the best way to phrase this, I'm not sure. But basically, we have to keep exploding until we can't explode anymore. And then we have to keep splitting until we can't split anymore, and then we're done. Uh, so explode is going to tell me whether or not it actually did something and what it, you know, what the result was. So if we did explode something, then you know, go back here. Actually, the thing I said was wrong. Uh, we're supposed to repeatedly apply reduce, whether that means exploding something or it's probably hard to say exactly what reduce is supposed to do. Like explode anything if there's anything to explode, split anything if there's anything to split. But like every time you should check if there's something to explode first. Already. So anyway, that's why reduce is written in a slightly stilted way. It's because it's slightly hard to say what it's supposed to do. Anyway, if it explodes something, okay, we need to do more stuff. So recursively, you know, all this reduce. Uh, otherwise, see if you can split something. And if you did, then recursively uh, call reduce again. And otherwise, nothing happened. So just you know, turn the number. Um, explode is the hard function. I am going to not explain that one for the moment. <laughs> Come back to that at the end. Uh, split by comparison is much easier. Um, remember that we're always meant to be splitting the leftmost number. Uh, so check if there's anything to split on the left, and if there is, then say that we split it, and uh, sorry, I'm not explaining this right. I guess the simplest case, so we have this recursive data structure, right? Either it's a leaf or it's a pair. So we need to handle both cases for split. It's easier to think about the leaf case. So if it's a leaf, uh, if it's less than 10, then you don't do anything, and if it's more than or equal to 10, then you do the splitting thing, right? Where you uh, put half the number on the left and half the number rounded up on the right. Nice way to do, you know, round up. Uh, otherwise, if it's a pair, then we need to handle this like a recursive case, right? Um, we're supposed to always split the leftmost number, so try splitting on the left half of the pair. Uh, if that did something, then great, we did our split. So say that you know something happened and return whatever happened to the left and the original unmodified right. Uh, if we couldn't find anything to split on the left, then try splitting on the right and, you know, say whether or not that did something and return, uh, return the new thing. This could also be n of zero, right? Because if this is false, then we know that this is didn't, you know, didn't do anything. Okay, so let's split. Uh, relatively straightforward, I guess, just you do need to write it recursively, so that might be a little bit complicated. Um, and then magnitude is even, you know, it's the simplest, well, maybe it's not simpler than that, but it's very simple. Uh, again, there's these two recursive cases. So if it's a leaf, just return the number. And if it's not a leaf, then recursively evaluate the left, recursively evaluate the right, return three times, you know, the left and two times the right. Uh, okay. So the hard one is explode. Um, and, you know, here's where... I think this would be easier if we actually thought about this as like a proper tree, in particular with a parent, right? Um, right now we just have the left and the right, um, but there's no way to go back like up, right? Like, who am I? The like, you know, am I the left half or the right half of some other pair above me? Like, that's what the kind of thing you need to know for explode. Uh, do it properly, or you could do it the way I did it. Um, so. Not actually used. I turned it into uh, a string, basically. Um, that the, the numbers are all together, right? So the pair, you know, 
12, 8 becomes 8, becomes that. Uh, I initially, like one tricky thing with handling it as a string is that some of the numbers are multiple digits long. Um, so I basically wrote this entire parsing code to handle that case because I want, I don't want to handle the numbers digit by digit. I want to handle like a full number together. Um, so how does this work? So I turn it into a string, uh, and then I loop through the string. If it's, you know, if I see a left bracket, then add a left bracket to my list of tokens. If I see a comma, add a comma to my list of tokens. If I see a right bracket, add a right bracket to my list of tokens. Uh, spaces, I can just skip. I don't care about those. Um, and then if it's a number, uh, then I need to keep sort of reading as long as we have like digits, and then I can uh, add the whole number to my list. And um, you know, I have this pointer of like how far I am along in the string. Uh, this is probably not the best way to parse like this string into like this list of tokens, but I don't know. <laughs> it's the way that occurred to me at the time. Uh, and also, this whole like list of tokens is probably not the best way to do explode. But anyway, that's what I did. Um, okay, so now we want to iterate through this list and do explode. Um, so the point is, uh, right. So if we see an opening bracket, so we are only supposed to explode things if they are at depth, uh, five, basically, right. If it's inside four other pairs and it itself is a pair. So the numbers, well, whatever the pair is at depth four numbers inside the pair are at depth five, uh, so an opening brace increases your depth, right? So we want to keep track of the depth as we iterate through the thing, through the string or parts list to see if we can find anything to explode, right? Because we explode at depth five. Uh, so an opening brace increases the depth, a closing brace decreases the depth, comma doesn't matter, numbers don't matter. And if we're at depth five, then we need to explode the current pair. Um, so we can get the left number, we can get the right number. Hopefully there's a comma in the middle. Uh, and then this is you know, the part that was troubling me uh, to do without a sort of string based representation is to find the number, like a, a number to the left of this pair and the number to the right of this pair. Uh, with this you know, representation, this is relatively easy. You just go through all the parts, and if the part's a number and it's less, uh, then you know, mark that as the left most. And we want the rightmost thing to the left. Uh, so that's fine because we're iterating from left to right here. So the last thing that is, you know, that meets this condition will be the rightmost one. Uh, on the right, we have this extra condition because we want the leftmost right thing. So that's the first one that we see. Uh, so we only collect the a right number uh, if we don't have a right number yet. Um, yeah, if it's an integer, you know, if we have a number and it's past our pair, uh, then mark that down. So if we did have a number to the right, you know, add uh, add our right value to that number. Uh, if we did have a number to the left, add our left value to that number, um, and replace the pair with a zero. And uh, okay, so if this all happened, that means that we did the explode did actually do something, and now we need to reconstruct our like normal Python list, um, which we can just do with uh, like single quotes dot join or ast dot literal eval right so take a string and convert it into the Python list and what string is that well it's just the string that you get if you like mash up all the parts together uh, right so this like string just goes back to this which is like you know parses as a valid Python list um, and this is because uh, some pieces right the numbers here are actually being stored as numbers so I need to convert them back into strings or like uh, empty string dot join doesn't like it. So that is how explode works. Uh, and yeah, I mean, in some sense, this problem is pretty straightforward, right? You just need to like do what they told you to do, uh, except that it's not clear how to implement explode. Um, but as I said, if you actually store it as like a proper tree with parent pointers, I think you can implement explode in like a satisfying symbolic way instead of the, right, the, the, the problems with this explode are like many fold. Uh, one problem is that it's many lines long. So this starts at line 30, and it ends at line uh, 85. 
So it's 55 lines long, is you know not good. That's like half the length of this whole program. Uh, and also it's very slow, which doesn't matter because the input's small, but it's you know unsatisfying. Like this line has to traverse the entire list is linear time, linear time, linear time, uh, linear time. So this whole thing traverses the entire list like many times. A proper implementation of explode would be, uh, I mean, I guess it would still be linear because we want to check if we have any deeply nested pairs, but it wouldn't, converting the whole thing to a string and back is very bad. So anyway, that part is unsatisfying, but like, you know, split is pretty straightforward. Nine to two is pretty straightforward. Uh, and then part one, you just add them all up. Okay, so what about part two? So part two um, is like quite straightforward. If you actually did part one, I think, um, which is just, it's okay. So that was adding all of them up. Now we want to know if we add up any pair of them, uh, what is the best value that we can get? Um, this code is actually not 100% correct, but I thought it would be fine and I was right. Uh, so I'm just iterating through the list, iterating through the list and, you know, find the magnitude of uh, the sum. And if that's better than what we have so far, then mark it down. Uh, a problem is like, I'm sort of, a, uh, I'm assuming that the answer is not going to be like two identical elements somewhere in the list. I assume you can't add, right? If I took out this line, then I'd have the problem that I might add X to itself and that would give a better answer than, you know, adding two actually distinct elements, which I thought figured was probably not allowed. Um, but like if X appears on the list twice, presumably I can add X to itself and that does count. Uh, I guess it did not matter at all in this case, but a slightly more proper uh, way to do this, which I think I'm just going to do. It's, it's nicer to have the code be more you know, actually correct. Uh, it's like this. So iterate all, over all the pairs. And then uh, so we need to add them in both directions. Because even though it's called add, add is like not a great name for this function, which is not has no identity, is not commutative. I don't know. Like the intuition of adding numbers is not really meaningful here. Um, so anyway, I should just try adding it both ways. Uh, yeah, see, this is why you don't, I'm trying to correct things. Uh, really? Apparently it is a bit slow. I'm not even sure how long this list is. Okay, sure. Uh, anyway, that gets four, five, eight, three, which is correct. Um, yeah, I guess part two was a bit, you know, the code took longer to run, but it's like not any more code. The hard part isn't running the add function, so whatever. Uh, so yeah, that is day 18 and my solution to day 18. See you tomorrow.